All right, everybody, welcome back to my channel and thank you all for watching. Now, when I first started this channel or when I first started using it, I did a video on when somebody came to my house and tried to kill me. And you guys seem to really like that one. And also, we did a video on the Bourbon Street bastard, the guy that punched me in the face, and that's got a million views now. So you guys seem to like to hear or see videos about me getting murdered or assaulted or whatever. So based upon that, I'm gonna give you another one. Here we go. So we're gonna go back to 2019. But before I get into it, remember, ring the bell, subscribe please. But anyway, 2019. Now I do a bit of acting amongst many, many other things. And I did an audition and I got myself a role on the fantastic Bruce Lee show, Warrior, written by Bruce Lee a long, long time ago, obviously when he was alive, and then brought to life by his daughter. Uh, so we're filming in Cape Town. I was very, very excited. So I was down in Brazil. I was working for ESPN. Then from there, I had to fly to Cape Town. Now, quick side note, when I flew to Cape Town from Brazil, um, they said, do you, uh, do you have yellow fever? And I said, no. And they went, can you prove it? And, I'm, and by the way, this is before COVID. I said, no, what do you mean? No, I can't pr prove I haven't got yellow fever. They said, well, you need to have paperwork to prove. I'm like, what are you talking about? How do I do that? They said, you need to go get a test. So I walk ages with my bags. I'm going through the airport. I'm like, mm, I'm so mad. And I get there. The place is closed because it's a Sunday. So I go back and I'm fuming. They're like, look, listen, you can't get on the plane unless you prove that you haven't got yellow fever. So I'm like, oh my God. So I called production at Warrior and they're like, well, never mind, we'll just get somebody else. I'm like, whoa, 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 no, no, no. I auditioned for this role. It's a great TV show. I want to do this. I said, let me think about it. I said, okay, if I fly via somewhere else, they won't know that I came from uh, Brazil. I said, what about if I fly via London? Because obviously I'm British and I've got a British passport. I said, they'll think I've came from London. They went, well, you can try that, but just know that if you get all the way to Cape Town and they turn you away, you're on your own. I'm like, okay, so I'll take the risk. Anyway, in the end, the flight that I did, I, I went from Brazil to London, London to Turkey, Turkey to Abu Dhabi, and Abu Dhabi to Cape Town. It was a long ass journey. It took several days to do it. And let me tell you, I wasn't so confident that my plan was gonna work as I was touching down into Cape Town. I thought if they look at that and they see my passport and they see a stamp from Brazil 48 hours ago, they might turn me away. So I was terrified. I thought, right, what can I do? Maybe I rip the page out of the passport. You know what I mean? But they're going to know that. They're going to know straight away. So I think, oh, what can I do? I know. So I get some orange juice. I take a sip of orange juice. Then I, I lick the passport page and then I stick it together and I sit it on my ass and I'm grabbing hold of the thing and I'm forcing myself down onto the passport so that the pages stick together, right? And then I get to passport control and the woman there, I'm like, I'm the most charming man you've ever met. I'm doing everything I can to keep her talking. Oh, I'm here to film a TV show, doing all this, yada, yada, yada. Anyway, Lo and behold, she didn't even check. She didn't even look. She's giving me my passport back. I said, have a great time in Cape Town. So anyway, there I went in. So there's my, uh, my, my journey to get to Cape Town. So I'm in Cape Town. I'm at a beautiful hotel and I go down. I meet Brett Chan. He's the uh, stunt coordinator and an Emmy nominated stunt coordinator. And Warriors is a fantastic show. If you haven't seen it, check it out. So we're doing a lot of uh, stunt choreography. We're choreographing the fight scenes and all the rest of it. And I got in town a couple of weeks early before I was supposed to film. As I say, very, very complicated fight scenes to learn. So I'm hanging out with all the guys and there's some people from Kazakhstan on there, which were just amazing people people and shout out to everybody from the show Warrior. So we go out for dinner one night, right? And we go out for dinner and everyone's telling me that Cape Town supposedly this dangerous place. I think, by the way, it might be one of the, you know, one of the murder capitals of the world, but I didn't realize this at the time. I could have done a quick Google search, but I am an idiot. Uh, so I thought, oh, this place seems lovely. Everyone's very, very uh, friendly. So we go out for dinner with uh, some of the stunt crew and these people from Kazakhstan. We have dinner and then a few of us, we go out and we have a few drinks, you know, and a few drinks lead to a few more drinks. Anyway, by the end of the night, it wasn't nothing crazy, but I'm a little tipsy. I'm a little buzzed. I'm a little drunk. Anyway, I say bye to everybody and I get an Uber back to my hotel. And when we get to near the hotel, there's a one-way system, right? And my hotel was just up there. And the Uber driver says, if, uh, if to get you there, I've got all the way around you know, in the car because of the one-way system. Or you can get out of the car now and just walk up there. It'll take you 30 seconds. Anyway, I'm in the back of the car and I'm a little drunk. Nothing crazy, as I said, but I'm a little drunk. Uh, and I'm not really listening to him. I'm going, yeah, 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 all right, mate, no problem, whatever. So I get out of the car 
and I'm at a four-way crossroads, right? So there's four ways I can go. And I didn't see which way he pointed. I thought, well, there's, there's four ways. I think it's up that one. So I start walking up there. And I'm walking up for like 30 minutes, 30 seconds, a minute or so. And I'm like, ah, this doesn't look right. As I say, I'm in Cape Town. I don't know it like the back of my hand. I'm like, well, this isn't right. So anyway, I pull my phone out, which is tourist move number one. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm looking at my phone, I've got my maps out and I'm trying to find, and I couldn't find it. Again, I was a little drunk, so maybe I was doing it wrong. So I walked back to the store where the Uber driver dropped me off. And I think, well, I've only got three more options. So I walked down another one. I walked down there and I'm like, dad, this isn't right either. So I'm walking back and I'm standing there and I'm looking like an idiot too. It's by myself. It's like 1.30 a.m., maybe 2 a.m. in the morning. And I'm on my phone and I'm walking around and maybe I'm stumbling a little bit. Anyway, I attract the attention of some undesirables. And by undesirables, I mean homeless, desperate people that want money. So a few of them come around, right? And they're all asking me for money, right? And, I'm, and they're being a little aggressive, okay? A little too aggressive for my liking. So I'm like, oh, whoa, whoa, I haven't got any money. Leave me alone, as I'm just trying to find my hotel. Now, I wasn't too concerned with them. You know, I, I, I didn't feel a big threat, shall we say? Uh, but that changed. That changed pretty quick, because I'm standing there and I'm like, yo, yo, yo. No, I, I'm not giving you any money. Leave me alone. I don't like your tone of voice or whatever it was. Then all of a sudden, this crappy old like security car, it looked like a, it used to be a cop car or something, drives along and then whoosh, just mounts the pavement. Almost misses me, mounts the pavement. As I say, it looked like it could have been a cop car at one point, but it was all rusty. Some of the windows were smashed. It was a, it was, it was a piece of crap, right? They, that drives on the car, uh, on the pavement. And then two guys jump out. And one of them whoosh, puts a gun to my head. He says, get in the car, get in the car now. I'm like, whoa. Now listen, I don't know about you. I've never had a gun put to my head, right? And I shit my pants. And I don't mind admitting that. I was terrified throughout this entire ordeal. So anyway, he got a gun to my head and he said, get in the car, get in the car now, right? Wasn't asking for my wallet. Wasn't asking for my phone or anything like that. If he asked for those things, I would have 100% given them to him. I value my life more than my wallet or my phone. Right? But they weren't asking for that. They were saying, get in the car, get in the car. And I'm like, I'm not getting in the car. Get in the car now, you're dead. I'm like, I feel if I get in the car, I'm also going to die. And they're going, get in the car. Anyway, I'm there and I'm terrified. And I honestly think my life is going to end right here, right now. Right? But I've got my phone in my hand, as I say, and I think I'm going to die. Right? So I'm always calling my wife. And so I look at it, face ID opens it, and I cl press click because I want to call my wife. And I want to say I love you one more time. And I want to send a message to my children. And I honestly, I swear to God. So my wife, it's ringing. And as I'm there, and obviously this is all happening very, very fast, you know, but your mind works very fast in these high pressure situations. So I'm thinking all this stuff as I've got a gun to my head. I think I need to call and just say I love you to the children one last time or whatever. And then as it's ringing, brr, 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 I'm thinking, I could, what? I can't do that. That's a fucked up thing for my wife to go through. In the middle of the night, I wake her up and say, yeah, I've got a gun to my head here, babe. Probably about to be murdered. So I just want to say all the best. Take care. So I think I can't do that. So I hang up. I, I stopped the call, right? And this, I'm, they're still arguing. But at this point, by the way, the guys with the guns, they're not very smart. They're not very bright, obviously. And they're probably, they were cracked out of their minds on something. They start arguing with the homeless people in their native language. They call it Afrikaans. It sounds very much like the Dutch language. There's a heavy Dutch influence. And they're arguing amongst, amongst one another. I'm standing there this whole time thinking, holy shit. And as I'm doing this, my wife's calling me back. She's ringing back and I'm like, Jesus, Beck, leave me alone. I'm in the middle of something here. So I kept hanging up. But as I'm standing there, he's got the gun pointed at me. But they start arguing amongst each other. And it's almost like they've forgotten about me. So at this moment in time, I just went, screw this. Woof. And I pushed the guy with the gun as hard as I could. And I mean, I pushed him and then I just ran. I ran one of the other ways I hadn't gone yet. And I just ran like my life depended on it. Now... To be fair, they didn't shoot, they didn't chase or whatever, they just thought I got away. But I ran away and I was terrified and I ran into the hotel and I go up and I, the security guards are there and they're like, what's going on? I'm like, ah, ah. I'm like, don't you ever tell anybody this is safe around here at night. Because I remember before I left, I said, it's safe around here at night. They're like, oh yes, sir, very safe, very safe, don't worry about it. I'm like, don't you ever say that. Don't you ever tell anyone it's safe because it bloody wasn't. Anyway, when I get back, 
uh, on set, when I tell everyone about it, they're very alarmed. And they move me into a nicer part of Cape Town, a beautiful resort down near the water. But then the lady that was picking me up, she would tell me, because I told her what happened. Every morning we have a driver pick us up, take us to location. I was telling her the story, because you know, I was mortified. But uh, she said, oh yeah, you gotta be careful out here. Like for example, she said life's very cheap. And she said, one of the things that they do, they said, we don't drive on the freeways or the motorways in the middle of the night from about midnight to about 4 or 5 a.m. We don't really drive on there. I said, well, why not? They said, well, what they do is, obviously, you know, there's a lot of uh, people that are going without, a lot, of, a lot of poverty, you know. So what they do is two guys will grab a massive rock and they'll carry it and they'll drop it in the middle of the freeway. And then in the middle of the night, a car's driving along, bang, they hit that rock, they break down and then they run out and then they murder whoever was driving and they rob them. So yeah, anyway, uh, very, very dangerous place. Uh, I definitely shit my pants. I don't mind admitting that. But seeing as you guys got such a kick out of me almost getting murdered by uh, uh, Roy, uh, on the last video, I thought I'd share that one with you. And a lot of you people want closure on that one as well. Well, sorry guys, I can't go into it. If I told you, I'd have to kill you. But anyway, if you're ever down in South Africa, just be careful at night. Anyway, all the best. Thanks for watching as usual. Really appreciate it. Ring the bell, click subscribe. Take care.